Hey everyone, I just got done reading an article published by Huawei in uh, collaboration with a Chinese AI uh, startup called Silicon Flow, and the paper was entitled uh, Serving Large Language Models on the CM384. And this was published June 15th, and then it was revised, I think, four days later, and the final version is out right now. And so it's available on ARXIV, I don't know how you say that, that's just a paper uh, place where you can get public source open, open papers on research. And what does this say? Well, I'm going to sum that up for you today. Basically, it tells you everything we've already talked about. It is a great paper. There's nothing really new in it, but it does show that with their tests that they do, uh, uh, stress testing the CM384, that everything that they have predicted before it was launched, it pretty much all of it has come true. And so this really shows the paradigm difference in uh, the AI models from the West and the East, because there is a difference. And that difference really hinges on the cost of electricity. So over in the West, essentially we are compute constrained in some sense. Uh, everybody you could say is compute constrained around the world. You always can use more compute. But really over here, what we are is we have a strain with electricity and specifically the cost per watts, i.e. electricity is expensive over here in the West, uh, especially in America. I shouldn't say the West. So generally, I don't know how expensive it is in Europe, but America, Electric electricity costs are kind of through the roof. And that's because our infrastructure has been lagging for the last 40, 50 years. They really haven't been investing too much into infrastructure. Um, today, we're not going to get too much into geopolitics. And on that note, hey, welcome to Ruin Tech, where we discuss the intersection of tech, politics, and finance. Today, we're not going to be looking too much at politics. We're going to stick with something fun with Huawei, with technology. But the U.S. essentially one of our biggest issues is in supplying this electricity to all these data centers. And that's why you see such people as Microsoft, Alphabet, Meta. They're talking about building modular nuclear reactors next to their data centers because simply put, the, U, uh, the U.S. grid cannot handle the addition of these uh, data centers. But China has no such problem. It's serving uh, bountiful, a lot of clean electricity right now and it's super cheap. In fact, BYD announced that it's going to release a charging network of 15,000 one megawatt chargers across China. This is something that simply put could not be done in America. It would not be possible. I mean, literally right now it is impossible. Our grid could not take that kind of impact. China's apparently can. And when we look at this, this is the difference in the AI uh, paradigm model from the West to the East. And this paper really highlights that. So what you have here is, as we discussed CM384 from day one, it is a system that takes a brute force approach. So it's composed of the Ascend 910Cs and on a per chip basis, the Ascend 910C is a little bit uh, below, I would say the Hopper 100 series, which is second generation technology. However, when you look at it as a system in the CM384, is the system is actually comparable in some aspects to the NVL72, which is the Grace Blackwell system, right? So which is first generation generation right now, top tier system from NVIDIA. And this paper goes through and it highlights some of those areas that is comparable to that and even outperforms NVIDIA. And specifically with the DeepSeq model, uh, uh, with the DeepSeq family of large language models, it really outperforms the video almost across the board in all kinds of training aspects. And I found that to be very interesting. Okay. But just remember that the approach taken with the CM384 is based on the fact that electricity costs are so much cheaper in China because it's a brute force method. The 384 means they have 384 910C accelerators in this machine. Whereas the NVL72, the 72 refers to the 72 Blackwell processors and they're paired with the Grace, which handles basically the management. Uh, and so the Blackwell is the accelerators. So those are the GPUs. So you can see here that the issue for uh, the American system is that they're trying to keep the performance per watt down as low as possible. And when you look at the CM384, it's roughly two to 2.5 times. I think it's like, yeah, let's just say 2.5 times uh, that of the CM384. So right there in the West, it would be a deal breaker. It's just too simply, simply put, it's just too expensive. But in China where electricity is much cheaper, it isn't. And so this is really important to China because they're facing such a crunch right now from export controls. And now we know that yesterday, and we're gonna get in a little bit of politics here, we know that yesterday that Donald Trump announced he has officially signed the real deal, 
So first they had the deal for the framework of a deal. And apparently I did hear this confirmed on the Chinese side, though neither side is releasing all the details. But it sounds like a further deal has been reached on this. And it's not just a framework. Some things are being implemented. And now it did say from the American and Chinese side that export controls will be lifted by both sides. And so this leads me to believe that the flow of NVIDIA's uh, H800s will resume to China. Okay. And there will be a market for this. However, understand now that the CM384 is going to have to compete head to head with these systems. And a lot of even the Chinese customers have already invested into NVIDIA systems. They have invested into CUDA. But now they might be a little bit wary. And so this paper right now is kind of going out and it's showing, hey, we've almost caught up. And since the beginning, Huawei has not said, hey, they've never. And if you heard their their CEO, he came out right away. So such a humble guy. I was like, oh, my gosh, Jensen Wong. Because Jensen was saying, Huawei is right behind us. Huawei is right behind us. But then uh, the, the NVIDIA CEO, uh, Ren, he was saying, no, you know, Jensen, he, he's, you know, he's being very modest. Jensen's just he's, he's being very nice, but we, we have a lot of work to do. But this paper shows that they don't have as much work as you may think. OK, again, the performance per watt is not as high as that of NVIDIA, but the performance, just the straight compute performance is and it even exceeds the NVL 72 and some metrics. And that, in a sense, is more important because everybody always needs more compute. But over here in the West, our costs constrain us with electricity. Now, you might say for like the Magnificent 7, cost is not a concern. And I would agree with you there. But not everybody has endless money like Facebook, like like Google, like Microsoft. OK, so all these other companies competing like Sam Altman, who doesn't even make money, they have a little bit of cost concerns. Unless they're a meme, a meme co company like Tesla that doesn't have to do anything and people just throw their money into it because basically it's a religion. OK, so, yeah, the CM384 has come out has shown that they also talked about the uh, mixture of group experts and how it, uh, the system performs very well with that. But understand, again, everything performs so well on it because it's just taking this brute force, 384 accelerators, all working in parallel. Remember, the one thing that Huawei does better than anybody, even better than NVIDIA, is networking. And well, Huawei, before they were sanctioned by America and forced to evolve into this behemoth that they have today, you can thank the great builder, America, for building up Huawei to what it is today. But before they were forced down this route through export controls, through sanctions, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, Huawei was known for being the premier networking company in the entire world. And so in this machine, they're networking on the 384 uh, um, processors. It basically asked, acts, the entire machine acts as one giant accelerator. And that's what NVIDIA likes to, argue, uh, like to brag about with this NVL72, but Huawei has achieved this with 384 units. Okay. So I would recommend you going and reading this. I'm not going to go through all the details and things today, like the specs, because it's really nothing new. Huawei stated everything that it could do. It never said off the bat that, hey, we're better than NVL72. They're just saying we're comparable on some, some metrics and we can exceed it in others. And in some, we fall behind, you know, and then if, you know, to the West, the most important one, cost per watt, we are definitely behind. However, however, if you're only concerned about compute, we are exceeding it in these areas with these models under these tasks, you know, training, whatnot, and what forth, which is very important, inferency. And so the paper just basically confirmed that. I think it's a very positive no. I would imagine that uh, Trump will also drop I, now, when I say this, I don't have confirmation, but obviously the Chinese are going to start shipping us rare earths for nothing. OK, it's not going to just be so that Chinese students can have their visas over here and go to the colleges, which is important because as much as people like to think, oh, America's falling behind. The one thing we do have is, you know, it's kind of. I think pretty much people around the world would agree that our our universities are still top notch. I'm not saying that Hong Kong and um, Europe don't have similar capabil uh, capabilities at the universities, but I think with the type of students you have, because obviously the environment's the best, yeah, not the best, the environment is very important for learning. And so when you're in America, you have some of the best students there. And by having that, you're in the best culture, best environment for learning which kind of gives our universities a little leg up. But I do not think that China would be like, oh, yeah, we're just going to relax everything and export controls just because you allowed our students back. OK, 
And because we already knew the students were going to go back because uh, Trump said that after the first meeting when he had the agreement for the framework for a deal. As funny as that sounds. So I would imagine that they're both sides saying export controls are going to be relaxed, that basically Trump is going to roll back the worldwide uh, uh, sanctions against people who might think of using the H uh, of using Huawei's sorry of using Huawei's CM three A four or Huawei's accelerators. That he'll roll that back. That's my first guess, right? And that makes perfect sense because in a way, Jensen Wong himself has said, "Hey, I want to compete with Huawei. I want to compete. I don't like this where we're holding them back like this, okay? Because it forces my company to get lazy." And we need fierce competition. And right now they're right behind us. Okay. And so I think they'll roll that back. And I think that they're going to let NVIDIA export the H800s, possibly even the H100s into China. Because I understand that Jensen said they took an $8 billion loss on that this year. And he's saying China is a $50 billion market. And he doesn't want to miss out on competing in that. Okay. He doesn't want to just give all that to Huawei. He wants to compete with Huawei fairly in the open market. So that's my guess that the, what they're going to do. I do not think that they're going to allow the most advanced uh, American technology or Western tech into uh, Huawei's hands, into Chinese uh, uh, hands that are on the sanctions list. So I want to expect Huawei to be able to license the latest version of ARM, which is what uh, version 9. I want to expect them to be able to go to ASML and get the latest EUV machines. Okay. And which is a tragic shame for ASML, which is under the thumb of Trump, even though they're in the Netherlands. Um, I wouldn't expect to be buying Grace Blackwell 200s unless you're buying them off the black market in China, right? You're not going to just be able to order them from Jensen. But I would expect that TSMC will start resuming using American tech. I would expect that uh, in China and their China supply chain, I would expect the flow of HA100s. Uh, and H100s flowing back into China. And I definitely would expect that the, I mean, if they don't loosen those sanctions on Huawei and their 3A4, that, that would be nuts. I don't know how China could ever accept that. And I would never think they would accept that because that was basically just BS. Anybody who uses the Huawei CM3A4 can be sanctioned uh, civilly and, and criminally. I mean, how crazy is that? But anyways, that's what I have for you today. Huawei is going to be able, it looks like, looks like, I hope, fingers crossed, I'd like to hear more details from both governments, but Huawei should be able to compete more with NVIDIA on a level playing field, which I think would be tremendous for both com countries, both companies and for both countries. I don't like this where we're trying to hamper Huawei, we're trying to, trying to break them at the kneecaps with sanctions and with BS. Everybody should be able to keep compete in this market fairly. Okay, that's just my opinion. If you agree with me, let me know down below. If you disagree with me, also let me know down below. Uh, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. And all of you, have a great weekend. Take care.